to welcome <laughs> you back on this Friday. Lindsay Boach joins us now. Yep, she's live this morning at Groomingdale's. Good morning, Lindsay. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, that heat, especially Sunday, 95 degrees, and that heat index is going to be way up above that, probably in the triple digits. And your pets really feel the heat as well. So we want to make sure that your pets are staying cool in this hot summer heat. Dale Matthews joins me. And uh, what are some things that we can do to help our pets? Well, the obvious is keep them in the air conditioning, mm -hmm. but it's not always an option for every dog. Um, the main thing is dogs that suffer from heat stroke is usually from dehydration. So water, water, water. They have to have cool water, fresh water in front of them at all times. So um, if they live outside, keep them in the shade where there's a nice breeze. Mm -hmm. And um, if they have long hair, it's best to keep their hair cut short. Mm -hmm. Now there are some dogs with double coats that if you brush them off and keep the undercoat pulled out, the hair actually protects them from the sun and keeps them cool. But if you have a dog that's like a Great Pyrenees or Newfoundland, sometimes they just have to be clipped down. The best idea is to clip them where you can leave a little hair to cover their skin mm -hmm. um, and you know, keep them short for the summer, it does cool them off. So sh shaving isn't always the best option? Not always, not in my opinion. Um, I, it's kind of controversial, mm -hmm. but I do believe that uh, some hair does protect you from the hot sun. Mm -hmm. Now, the dogs that live in the house, they're fine. <laughs> they're fine. You can leave them long or fluffy or however, as long as you keep them brushed and bathed and completely combed out so the air can get to their skin. Now, I know I mentioned this um, Tuesday when we were talking about traveling with your pets, but never ever i'm going to keep stressing this leave your pet in the car your dog in the car it gets so hot in those cars i know last year we did an experiment where we baked cookies in a car um, and they actually baked so um, very important and you have some grooming techniques also that you use um, to keep dogs from um, overheating yes mainly it's brush 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 get the undercoat out keep them nice and cool and um, another thing to address about the heat is their feet. Mm -hmm. Remember um, that if it's too hot for you to walk on your bare feet, it's too hot for them. And I can't stress enough in these summer festivals and things that people do outdoors, don't bring your dog. They really don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're much cooler and much happier at home, um, in the cool, in the shade, in the house. Um, they're not having a good time. And when I see someone, you know, taking a dog out in the hot sun on the hot pavement, um, with no water, you know, I know that dog is just miserable, mm -hmm. you know. I know you want to show off your pet and summer seems to be the good time to do it, but it's a better option to leave them at home. All right, and we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, Fourth of July is coming up. Uh, fireworks sometimes scare some dogs, but there is an option for you if your dog um, is afraid of loud noises, uh, thunder especially. Um, it's called a thunder shirt, and we're going to learn about that in the next half hour. Because that'll be the only time in the next seven days we get to hear the word thunder at all. Lindsay Boach joins us now. And she is live this morning at Grooming Dales in Hannibal. Good, good morning, morning, Lindsay. Hey, good morning, guys. We have a special friend with us this morning. A very well-behaved dog just stands there uh, like a little show dog. Stay. <laughs> See? Told you. <laughs> We're talking about these thunder shirts, though. Fourth of July is coming up. Uh, fireworks scare a lot of dogs. Um, loud noises, um, thunder appropriately named Thundershirt, um, can also scare dogs. But we are talking about this, and it actually helps calm the dog down. Uh, Cheryl Harder joins me and explain a little bit about the symptoms of the dog that you should put this on. Yes, um, the dogs have um, those anxiety problems, and um, you might see your dog panting, drooling, uh, running around aimlessly, trying to find a really small place to squeeze into. Mm -hmm. Those are some symptoms of those anxieties and fears that dogs have. So what does this shirt do then for the dog? You know, I'm not an expert about psychology and mm -hmm. psychiatry and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, but what I understand, it's the same concept as swaddling a baby that's cranky or putting a compression shirt on an autistic child. It just makes them feel cozy and comforted. Mm -hmm. And these are not shirts for badly behaved dogs. They're shirts for just dogs who have those anxieties. Yes, yes. It's, uh, the uh, box says it, it's for dogs with barking issues. Mm -hmm. Now there are barking issues and there are barking issues. <laughs> and we need, uh, we're, this is only good for the barking issues that are associated with anxiety. 
Okay, and Dale actually uh, puts these on her dogs. Uh, how has that changed their behavior? Well, my dogs, my old dog just started being afraid of storms after his whole life. He <laughs> shakes, and I thought he was having a seizure the first time. It was terrible. Um, when I first put the shirts on them, they didn't react right away. Mm -hmm. It was after I used them two or three times. And they go, they, when I put the shirts on, I, they go in the bathroom with the exhaust fan on and lay down together and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Where before, the entire time the storm was going on, they panted, they drooled, they shook, they tried to climb in my lap. And um, now, when the, when the storm's coming, even before we know it, they come and ask to have their shirts on. And it's amazing. They just, they, we put them on both of them, they lay down, they go to sleep. Now, how tight uh, do you put it on? Because uh, the way that you put it on is you just kind of wrap it around. Like, we, like uh, Cheryl said, you kind of like swaddling a baby. Mm -hmm. How tight do you want to make that? Well, the point of it is you want it pretty snug. Okay. Um, it's, it's stretchy, so it's not going to cut off their circulation. But mm -hmm. I pull it down pretty good and pull the chest pretty tight. And you could just see their face. It's almost like a big relief the minute that, that you pull it tight. Huh. It's an amazing product. So it's something, that, like I said, that's great for 4th of July. Fireworks are coming up. Um, people do them not only on 4th of July, but on the weekends before and for different festivals as well. Um, thunderstorms, I know we don't have any in the forecast, but uh, like Dale said there and Cheryl said, they're great for those types of things. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to be talking a little bit about fleas and ticks and prevention for those. Uh, summer is full of problems for bugs and for your pets, so we're going to talk about that coming up. All right, we will anxiously await that information. What other tricks can your dog do? Um, play dead. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder shirt was on too tight. Caesar Milan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Boach is here with us live. Good morning, Lindsay. She's live at Grooming Nails. Ooh. Yes, good morning guys. We're talking all about pets this morning and uh, fleas and ticks can be a huge problem, especially if you bring them to a groomer. Um, no groomer wants to have fleas and ticks in their uh, grooming salon because it can be transferred, they can, they can be transferred rather to other pets and it's, it's not good. So we have some special guests with us. We have Cheryl Harder with us and Scout is joining us this morning. Uh, explain a little bit about what you need to do for fleas and for ticks for a dog. Mm -hmm. You need to see your vet. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to your veterinarian about what product's gonna be best for you. Some of the products that are out on the market are better for fleas than ticks, and then some are a little bit better for ticks. So it depends on what your issue is. But right now, this summer, bad fleas. Mm -hmm. With lots of ticks, we're kinda past heavy tick season. But for fleas, um, talk to your vet. You can get some of these products over the counter, but definitely get ones that your vet recommends. Some of the others can be dangerous. We've had dogs come in the grooming shop that if um, their people tell us how sick they got mm -hmm. because they just use some over-the-counter stuff. And especially if you have dogs and cats, the cats can get sick also. Yes, yeah, some of the products out there are specifically for dogs. And if the cat rubs up against the dog that's been treated with a product that cats can't um, process, mm -hmm. it'll make the cats sick and maybe die. All right, so Scout is going to get a treatment here. Um, you're using Frontline, and that's for mm -hmm. fleas and ticks. Um, Advantix also works uh, for this as well. It mm -hmm. just depends on your dog. Now, where do you put it, and how do you put it on there? Each product has a little special way of doing it. Frontline, in particular, you just um, snap the little thing, and you want to part the hair kind of, oh, somewhere between the base of the head and the between mm -hmm. the shoulder blades, and just put it all in one spot. Okay. Some of the products say you're supposed to drizzle it down the back, but Frontline, and so whatever product you get, just make sure you read the directions, what's the correct placement for it. And what does this do? now? Because it's just in one spot, but this protects the whole dog. Yeah, it's going to be absorbed into the system, and so you don't have to worry about bathing your dog 24 hours later or if the dog gets in the pond or whatever. Just you, They need 24 hours. I usually apply this at bedtime mm -hmm. so that it can have a chance to dry overnight, too. But once it's been absorbed into the system, um, what happens is the fleas, if they do bite the dog, are going to die. Okay. And it also keeps fleas from being able to reproduce laid eggs. Mm -hmm. And there's another product that if your dog has fleas will kill the fleas 
pretty quick. Yeah, this product, Capstar, mm -hmm. is fantastic about immediate kill. Mm -hmm. It's not going to have any lasting effect, but it will kill all the fleas within two to four minutes. I mean, hours. <laughs> <laughs> two to four minutes is that really, really be nice. So you should do this um, once a month. Frontline and, well, all the other products mm -hmm. recommend once a month. Uh, but if you're in an area that has lots of fleas or you have lots of animals and you have a real problem with fleas, you can take two different products and use them every two weeks, okay. alternate every two weeks. All right, we were talking just kind of like pain medicine. If you, you can use Advil and ibuprofen um, interchangeably as well. So lots of great information. We're going to show you that Thunder shirt again. I know 4th of July is coming up. A lot of dogs are scared. So at the end of the show, we're going to talk about that just a little bit more. Great. It's taking your segment, tying it into the inappropriate lyrics. Brad Paisley, want to check you for ticks. Another Brad Paisley song. <laughs> <laughs> Another Brad Paisley song, Water, which we're not going to see any of.